Well, morning, everyone. I'm really um, delighted to be here. I'm Emma, Chief Executive of Bristol Ilvic. This is my colleague, um, Joe, the Director of the Theatre Collection. Um, I'm really, this, is, this is a new crowd for me, and I'm really pleased to be here, but uh, I feel very welcome being on a sort of version of home turf. Um, so I spend my, my lot of time in, uh, in buildings just like this. But um, this, is, this is my home theatre. I like to think of it as mine, Bristol Old Vic. Some of you might have been, I'm not sure. It's a very um, well-known... Um, theatre, it's a very beautiful theatre and it's a very important theatre. Um, the auditorium you're looking at just there um, is just over 250 years old, um, which makes it the oldest continuously working theatre in the English-speaking world, we think, definitely in the UK, so that's, a, that's an extrapolation, but we think um, it's, the, it's the oldest continuously working theatre in the English-speaking world. It, it's... it's um, the kind of theatre that was built all across Northern Europe during the mid-18th century. And you can see, actually, just looking around you right now, the impact that this theatre has had on modern theatre architecture. Um, because you can see that the, the similarities between um, the arches, the, the curved architecture we have here, the flat stalls, it's all drawn from this model of an 18th century theatre. Um, so uh, Bristol Ovic is a producing theatre. We make work that originates on, on that stage there in Bristol and goes off to tour um, around the world. I was very thrilled to see a poster for Jane there out front, which is coming here um, to Manchester next year. So... Um, we are in the beginnings now of a, um, a, a heritage uh, project, which is all about finding ways of bringing um, the theatre's history alive for the public. Um, and we've been looking at ways of working very closely with our colleagues at the um, Theatre Collection and the Bristol, Bristol Record Office. Joe will tell you a bit more about that in the moment. There's, there's really three aspects to the um, heritage project. Partly, it's about investing in the conservation of, of, of the oldest part Parts of the building. Um, our building ranges from 18th century fabric through to very modern day fabric. So some of the oldest parts, oh my gosh, I'm it's doing it again. It. Just check oh. um, so, so most of, <laughs> most of, um, most of, a, a lot of the building requires some very, very particular um, uh, conservation work. So that's a big part of our heritage project. Another part is investing in the archives and making sure that we can look after the oldest parts of our collection. Um, and also, most excitingly, um, it's about investing in new ways, new technologies, new means by which we can bring this 250-year story of Bristolovic alive for the public. So... As Emma mentioned, the project involves Bristol Record Office and also the Theatre Collection. It's a really interesting mix, I think. The Bristol Record Office holds the archives of the building back from 1766 up to the present, whilst the Theatre Collection, which is an accredited museum in a university, owns the, holds the archive of the Bristol Old Vic Company, which was formed in 1946 and Emma is still running today. But really interestingly and importantly, we own an awful lot of related archives, archives of actors, directors, designers, photographers, historians, whose work has been inextricably linked to the theatre. And actually, it's these interconnections between the three organisations and the mix of archives and architecture that we hold that make this project so exciting and so unique. For us, we're a specialist academic resource based in the theatre collection we in the university, we have huge collections. This is stack room one of 12. We exist to facilitate scholarly activity and we try to act as a creative catalyst for new work, whether that's physical or digital. Basically, we want to get the material out of the stack rooms, into the reading room to be used by students, to be used by the public. Um, but we have a very, very limited display space. So when the theatre came to us and said, we've got this idea that's going to involve public engagement and working with the archives, we absolutely leapt at the chance, a chance to get the archives out of the stacks and onto, dis onto public display. To give you an idea of scale for us, this involves 900 boxes of Bristol Old Vic archive and probably 500 boxes of related archives. For Bristol Old Vic, the scale is less challenging, but obviously their material is much more historic and they're dealing with a lot of issues around conservation. So our aims really were to intellectually reunite our collections and the collections at the record office and use these archives to help enable the theatre to tell stories about the theatre and draw people in who wouldn't necessarily be interested in coming to the theatre collection or the record office. 
and we wanted to draw in new users. This is a heritage lottery funded project and Emma will come on to that later. So um, I wanted to share this slide to, th this is really the best business plan I've ever written for Bristol Old Vic. Um, I like the fact that it comes down to one page. I like the fact that it's a diagram. Um, but really it's important to say that this project has a driving imperative from our point of view, which is that it's all about finding the future stability of Bristol Old Vic as a really broad, plural organisation. You'll all be aware, I'm sure, because you're, you're in a not dissimilar position, that public investment, um, philanthropy is challenging at the moment. It's hard to make a live arts organisation stack up um, commercially, so we've been looking as creatively um, as we can about finding ways that we can secure the business of the future for the long term. And we're, so we're transitioning from being simply a theatre um, into being a theatre organisation, a heritage business, and a commercial business and really what I'm trying to drive with Bristol Old Vic at the moment is getting as much of the organisation into that central triangle as possible um, and it, it's with the support of the Heritage Lottery Fund and also um, with the support of the Arts Council that we're, we're really on the verge of um, delivering this. So the capital project that we're about at the moment will be reopened and uh, we finished in 2018, autumn 2018, at which point I, I'm confident that the kind of business I'm imagining on the, the, the left hand side of that um, diagram will have emerged. So this is, this is a little bit about what we're, um, what we're trying to build. I realised that we're, we're missing a slide which will give you a sort of sense of the geography of Bristol Ovic. But if you imagine a site that's in four quarters, we have two um, opposite 18th century buildings and two um, 20th century buildings. So you can see there um, at the front, uh, to the left, the sort of Palladian building there is the Cooper's Hall, serving as a quite awkward box office and a weird staircase for us at the moment, really not doing its best as a building. The, the new, the new building there to the, uh, to the right of it is what we're about to build. Um, at the moment, that has um, a very sort of uh, bland brown brick frontage. It looks a bit like a magistrate's court. That's all about to be demolished, and we're going to build a very uh, beautiful open um, foyer that will pull people in off the street. The theatre itself is set back one block and is behind that new, um, that new building. Um, it was always hidden from the street. It was originally built behind um, two uh, houses uh, for various reasons. Um, so we've often wondered what the front of the theatre would look like. And actually, when we were going into the capital project, we thought, how, how do, where do we seek our inspiration? Um, and we decided there's, there's a, um, a prologue that was written for a um, performance of She Stoops to Conquer, which performed at Bristol Ovic in 1943, which ends with the lines, it is our intention first and last to serve the present and deserve the past. And that's been a very, very driving imperative to us, a real inspiration. We've always looked to the past to inspire the present. So we found, through our work with our colleagues in the archives, this picture. Now, this picture was not of Bristol Old Vic, but it's of a, a theatre in Richmond, no longer there, that was built by uh, the same architect two years previously. So we often wondered whether the front of Bristol Old Vic might have looked like this. We turned to our own archive and we found the next picture, which was taken in 1972 when the buildings in front of Bristol Old Vic were knocked down. And if I asked Joe to toggle backwards and forwards a little bit, you can start to see some similarities between the scarring on the, uh, the, the, the present building matches with the staircases. You can see the echoes of the doors. So we started to think about um, the fact that we can use the building as it is. Let's jump forward again. And we can work to reveal um, this uh, facade, use it to show 250 years of architectural intervention in the theatre, and then bring digital technologists into play. If we jump forward to the next slide, that's the facade at the back of what is the new foyer, so the front wall of the theatre. We'll show you a slide a few moments, uh, in a few slides' time, that that's become a projection screen for local digital artists who will use it as an inspiration to show what the theatre might have been like over the last 250 years. So really trying to use the archive as a source of uh, reflection on what we've got now and an inspiration for digital artists to come in and recreate something that, t that speaks to the history of Bristol Old Vic. What's this? So also, well, this is the Cooper's Hall that I was talking about as, at the moment is a slightly strange staircase. It was of its time, um, but we've been able to use the research um, in the archive to plan to put it back to what the Georgian um, original Georgian architects of the hall intended it to be, which is, there's an artist's impression there, which is essentially a grand hall at Piano Nobile level. So again, it's been brilliant to work with our colleagues in the archive 
to pull out information that pertains to the original architecture of the hall and use that as an inspiration to the uh, plans that we have today. So now on to the interpretation side. Uh, we're starting off with some very basic, very familiar sorts of interpretation, creating a timeline of playbills and posters that will go into the pit passages. So this is the part of the theatre that you walk through just before you enter the auditorium. These will just be digitised um, and reproduced on the walls. But what we will do is put QR codes on them so people can look at them grab them, download them to their phone, and also, uh, with an effort to think a little bit about sustainability, we'll also have them as print-on-demand items as well. So this, at the moment, seems very traditional and very familiar to people. Uh, when, the, we, when we're doing research and user consultation about how people wanted to experience heritage at the theatre, there was a real public appetite for real objects on display. So these will be incorporated too. We're going to play on the theatre's concept of the reveal with physical objects hidden away to be discovered alongside digital and digitised content drawn from the record office and the theatre collection. Space is very limited here. Um, if you're a museum curator like me, you're thinking about dwell times and exhibitions. If you're a theatre manager like Emma, you're thinking about people having a glass of wine in the interval. These exhibitions are designed to be the length of time it takes to drink a glass of wine in the interval. <laughs> <laughs> We also wanted to address the usual questions about how best we enable access to the archival collections through digitisation. Um, and we wanted to think differently about this. So rather than just putting the digitised archive, and we'll be digitising 10,000 images, rather than just putting them online, we wanted to take them back to the theatre. So here we've got um, a little mock-up of a digital touch table. We'll put production photographs and other images from the theatre on it, but people will be able to curate their own mini-exhibitions, select their own items <coughs> from the archive, and we'll be able to project them real-time into other spaces within the theatre to really enliven the architecture and reunite the architecture and the archives and the audience with, within them. Again, we'll use new technologies so people can download and save their own mini-exhibitions. Um, working with the theatre has certainly opened our minds in terms of how we use archives to tell stories, and it's opened our thinking about reimagining archives. Bristol is an amazing city full of creative technologists and interpretation specialists, and we've been working really closely with them. This is um, a small example. The theatre was very, very keen that people coming to visit the theatre had a sense of the backstage life of the theatre and the tradecraft involved. So this is um, a lighting booth based on original set models in the theatre collection where members of the public can come in, use digital technologies to light and relight productions, hopefully giving them an insight into the process of making theatre. I guess it's all about places and spaces, archives and objects to inform and inspire a deeper level of engagement. This is where it starts to get really, really good fun. So th this is a project around augmented reality. So working with the archive, we can use um, photographs, plans, designs from the whole 250-year history of the building, create an app that means that when you come to Bristol Obvic, you'll be standing in today's architecture, but you can download a year pull up imagery from the archive that will then, as you move your, um, your iPads or your phone around the building, you'll be able to scan and have almost a sort of lens that you can see into the past. Um, and this, at the moment, is some technology that's being developed locally. Um, the, the creative application of this technology is being developed locally by one of our digital partners. But we're also very aware that whilst this feels very contemporary at the moment, in two years' time, there might be something that feels even more so. So one of the challenges of working with digital technology technologist is certainly keeping up with them um, and making sure that the criteria of your funding allows you to keep up with them because it's taken us quite some argument over the last few years to bring um, HLF to a place where they're comfortable with investing in this kind of project and I'm sure that by the time we get to 2018 when we're actually opening the heritage scheme it might be that we've moved on again um, but this is something we are very very um, proud of at the moment a very simple app that be able to download on arrival at the building and just use to scan around the foyer as you stand there. 
Um, this also, again, is working with um, uh, local digital artists. This is an idea from the Maguires. Um, as Joe said, we're, we're very lucky in Bristol. There's, there's a real... Um, uh, there's a real ferment of digital artists and digital technologists in the city. So this is up in the roof void of the theatre, which is, is in of itself a very beautiful space, which was once the costume workshop for the theatre. So the idea is you have a viewing platform um, and you will have some, th these are animated costumes, but you will have things that the use of hologram and light that you can actually almost um, bring the ghosts alive in, in the building um, and have something that really does animate the space in a new way. This is actually the reality of the space, which is, <laughs> which is, um, and, and this, this is, it's also for us about celebrating the fact that in 1766, Bristol of it was truly pioneering. Um, we, we have a tagline, which is the future of theatre since 1766. So alongside celebrating um, the most advanced technology today, we also want to make space in the scheme to celebrate technology as it was then. Um, this is the Thunder Run, which is a sort of series of troughs that run through the roof void of the theatre. It would be sort of up there if you were at Bristol Old Vic. Um, and if you were at the, um, the, the Heath scene in, in King Lear, for example, you needed the thunder to roll, stage management would be up there um, sending, lifting out those panels and sending wooden balls rolling down. And we've got a sound clip, So I what think. we're going to do is we're going to raise an 18th century storm in this theatre. And Adan is over there from Mill Pond School. He's on the wind machine. So, Adan, can you start? This is an 18th century wind machine. Give it a bit of a whirl. A bit louder. Go on, a bit faster. Go on, a bit of rain. Go on, give that a twirl. This is where I've seen it. The rain is coming down. OK, Amanda, go, let's go. Thunder, listen out for thunder. This is recorded from in the auditorium. And it's so convincing. It is. <laughs> it sounds like real thunder. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, yeah. The 18th so that, that, was, that was a radio interview that we did on the day that we first rolled the thunder, which was, um, it's pretty awesome. We used it in King Lear this summer. It really, really does work. Um, this is, thank you, this is, um, this is back to that wall that I spoke about a, a five minutes ago, which was, um, is being recovered um, back to its sort of base architecture. And you can see there a large projection against it. So we've been working with um, mapping projection artists who can use um, very clever uh, sort of architectural scanning of, of um, the fabric of the wall, neutralize it, and then put uh, sort of 3D film against it. And the idea is that we animate all of those now sort of defunct doorways and stairwells that you'll see the scars of in the architecture so that we'll have a, a, a film piece called The House is Open, which when you open the house at the theatre, i.e. the moment you're allowed to come in and take your seat before the show starts, we'll the, the, the foyer lights will dim and we'll play a film against the wall that will show audiences of different eras walking into the doors that they would have walked in um, if they were there at the theatre in their day. Um, so get a, a, a large-scale digital art commission um, that, that I think will be a very striking central aspect of the Heritage Project once we're through. We're also, I just wanted to mention a little bit about audiences because a huge part of the project is about reaching out. We want Bristol Ovic to go from being showtime to full time and being, being a building that people can come into throughout the day, engage with the archive, learn about the history through the exhibitions and events and tours that we'll be running. But it's also about reaching out into the community. Um, and a particular audience for us is trying to reach families in parts of the city that don't currently engage in the theatre. And we're doing that through a collaboration with children's centres. So three of them I've listed there, which is about sending out outreach teams. And of course, we're lucky because as a theatre, we have an established um, department that works in, in outreach um, already. But we're going to be taking um, the heritage story out into the community. We're also interested, of course, in engaging um, tourists to come and visit Bristol Old Vic in the way that they might go and visit SS Great Britain, um, to see it as a, an opportunity to explore history and architecture and the archive, as well as come and see a show. And we're also interested in a, a, a group that we call the Third Space Seekers, which is the people that might be after a place to grab a coffee, read the newspaper, catch up on their email, that by virtue of creating a really amazing public space that's just a beautiful space to be in, we can bring a whole new constituency of people to the building. And of course, once they're in the front door, then we can start to tell them our stories um, and start to hook them in. So really, to summarise, it's all about taking an archive, using it for research, and bringing it to life back in the theatre in which it belongs. This is a module we teach called Performing the Archive, which is all about that, that through this project we will now roll out to young people and wider audiences. 
I'm going to end <laughs> on a clip, uh, which I think sums up what we're trying to talk about. This was a prototype of the proje projection mapping project that Emma mentioned earlier. This was done for the 250th uh, anniversary celebrations early, earlier this year. It used 350 items from the theatre collection and record office archives to tell the story of the history of the theatre. Um, by using digital technologies such as this, we've been able to take the archive out of the strong room and get it back onto the walls of the theater, back into the streets in the city in which it belongs. I hope it's given you a sense of how we are managing to reanimate and bring some energy back into the, the archives and the architecture and connect them with the audiences of the theater. hope the ladies and gentlemen will not think the price is fixed for admission exorbitant when they will please to consider their very great expenses, particularly the high charge of rent, that the house will be illuminated with wax, that the clothes, scenes and all decorations are new and that they will spare no pain or expense to make the entertainment as elegant and pleasing as the most established theatre. Thank you.